This is Jets game reaction recaps to game two of the 82 game season for the 2021-2022 Winnipeg Jets. When the Winnipeg Jets lose back to back games to start the season, one to Anaheim and now to the San Jose Sharks. Two not very good opponents and Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't already know what these sunglasses mean, these are the sunglasses that I put on when I cannot stand to look at the shit that is on my computer screen. So, unfortunately, for the first game of this season, they are going on because this game is god-awful from start to finish um, with little things sprinkled in. Does that sound familiar? It's, it's last game. And before I say anything about this game, all I'm going to say is there's great individual performance in this game. As a team, collectively, they still need to learn how to play together. I don't know if it's the style, I don't know if it's coaching, because it's early. I'm going to blame that a little bit on coaching, and a little bit on both. I think that Paul Maurice has done a lot of other things that were really bad in this game, but when it comes to them and their play styles, their new things that they've elemented, so like, especially when it comes to them being behind every play. We're going to start that right now. I think the Jets are behind almost every play, um, and they can't read anything. And that is most likely to do with new defense and new type of, you know, meshing that defensive neutral zone play and all that. That takes time to get together. So... Do I think that they should be better? Yes. Do I blame that on Paul Maurice? Absolutely not 100%. It's a little bit of both on that one, okay? So I'm just saying that right now before everyone starts to think that, oh, but I just hate Paul Maurice. Because even though I don't like Paul Maurice, in that area, it's a little bit of both because it's the second game of the season. So let's wait a little bit to see if that's a cons consistent thing. But so far for the first two games, it has been. Moving on from that, the other thing I got to state, before I really start to rant and get off topic about things, the officiating game was horrible. All game. So many scrums, so many missed calls on both sides, I feel like. Even though San Jose played a good game and they weren't doing anything necessarily insanely dirty because the Jets did some stuff that got, shouldn't have been called. And I don't know, it's just a weird game. That high hit that um, uh, Schmidt threw, was it dirty? No, but did it need to be thrown? I don't know. Like... So, horrible fishing for both on both sides of the game today, in my opinion. I, I just did not like it. Gotta state that. I think the refs gotta do a better job. But when Frostmile Boschman is against Jets, is refing the Jets, it's always a shit show because of how Paul Murray's treated him way back when, when Brian Little almost had his career ended. Oh, it would sound familiar. Uh, when Tampa Bay, but way back when, I believe like 2017 or whatever it was, or maybe even earlier. I think it was 2017 or 16. It doesn't matter. The point being, that's always, you know, caused bad fishing with him. So, moving on from that. I'm not even going to say any of the good stuff I wrote about the first period because I honestly, what's the point anymore? I think Logan Stanley has been horrible this year to start so far the first two games, um, which really annoys me because Vili Hinola, I said, should be fighting with Stanley for the start of the season, and Vili Hinola is not getting thrown in the lineup, which I don't understand. If Stanley's been struggled the first game, and you know, you throw out, you throw out, um, uh, you throw out uh, for Veselin in it tonight, you know, like you, you take out Evgeny Sveshnikov, you do all these things, like, okay, why? Why are you doing that? And you're not taking on Stanley. If you're going to play around with the younger guys, take him out because he's not been good. He should not play the next game. Uh, which also, we'll get into it, but Logan Stanley and the penalty kill also isn't a very good thing that should be at the NHL level. So, Paul Maurice, you should have learned from that, but you don't because you just don't learn from anything. You know, I'm trying to stay composed. I, I really am. I don't like screaming about the Jets. I don't. Contrary to your beliefs about, oh, this guy just thinks he can yell, blah, 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 doesn't know anything. I don't like yelling about the team that I root for because I want to see these guys do good. Like I said, lots of good individual performances, but as a team, what the hell is going on? Like, seriously, what's the point? I take notes on everything I see. Everything I see in a game. This is about a page and a half long document on Google Docs. Of everything from the first to the end of what I noticed. The hits, things like this, and I could take you through all of it. And it would literally be just me going up like this. A big fucking wave. You know why? Because that's all the Jets are. Oh, this was good. Oh, what the hell is this? This was okay. Oh, back-to-back -back goals within a minute, and now you're down. What the hell is going on? This team needs to mesh together better. Coaching staff needs to do more to change it up when things aren't working, because they never have done that, and it's been abysmal to start this year. Like, if you are going to actually sit there and say that, oh, it's the second game of the season, it doesn't matter, these guys need like 20 games to get ready. Maybe they need 20 minutes to become the best version of themselves, but this isn't even close to being a mediocre version of themselves. This is absolute trash. The Jets do not look like a team that have ever played together. If they needed this much time to mesh a new system in place, there should have been more preseason games where you had Nate Schmidt and you had uh, a freaking Brendan Dillon playing more. You should have had more type of games where you had the top six playing more. You should have had whatever you needed to do to work in these guys to have a better system with the defense and how they move the puck. It didn't seem that way. A lot of other teams looked did new things in preseason that seemed to work pretty okay and start to get better throughout it. This hasn't shown anything. First two games, the Jets look stale and like they don't know what they're doing under this new system with these new players. That's on coaching because uh, clearly they haven't done enough to these guys to be able to understand how to play together. You can't blame it all on players when you have such talented players. 
Like, seriously, you're telling me that Pierre-Luc Dubois, Blake Wheeler, don't get me started on Blake Wheeler either because he had a bad game, but he's not a terrible player. So I'm tired of all these comments saying that I don't know anything about hockey. I'm not saying Blake Wheeler is terrible at hockey. I'm saying he's not a top-line guy. There's nothing wrong with being a second-line player and getting 65 points. So maybe you should reevaluate your headspace before you sit there and call me delusional. Either way, though, getting back on top, Blake Wheeler, Mark Scheifele's back. Andrew Kopp is a very smart hockey player. Nikolai Oz is a genius. All these guys. Logan, how do these guys... Not, you're telling me all of these guys collectively, great hockey minds, they can't figure out how to play with the system? There's something going on with coaching. There has to be. If this continues to be a trend going into five games, I would say that's a huge cause for concern. A huge cause for concern. This is against two mediocre teams that really outplayed the Jets for a lot of it. And don't say, oh, it was lucky breaks, because Connor Hellebuck was improved from his last game, no doubt. He still was, you know, in his net a lot. He really wasn't uh, going out to challenge a lot, which is an important thing Connor Hellebuck likes to do, because he's a big guy, so challenging is a big aspect of his game. And he didn't do any of that tonight. He was for a lot of the, for the second goal, I believe it was the uh, just the Weatherby goal. He was right up in the net already. He wasn't challenging the shot at all. They showed it on Sportsnet. They walked through every second of that play, and I couldn't believe my eyes when I'm watching it in slow mo. How far in the net he was already. And don't say, oh, he's just caught out of position because he had ample amount of time to come out and challenge. He didn't. He stayed right there and went into his net. That's a problem. Connor Hellebuck has been very shaky to start this season. And like I say in every game last season and how it's been with Connor Hellebuck since he became a god is that this team's soul is Connor Hellebuck. They live and die by a Connor Hellebuck performance. And usually Connor Hellebuck has been pretty steady after being really bad in a, in a game. You look at his record after you know being pulled and it's immaculate. So, this is not a good game by Connor Hellebuck. That's two bad games in a row or mediocre you could say. And if you're saying, oh, don't get mad at Connor Hellebuck, it's not his fault. I'm not blaming Connor Hellebuck. This one doesn't on him completely. The Jets let him down too, and don't, believe, don't get me wrong, they did. So, how is it all Connor Hellebuck? It's not, but he needs to be better. He definitely, definitely needs to be better. I'm just going to take you guys through the last parts of the... I don't want to make this video too long, because I, I don't need to say anything else, I feel like. Like, they played good at, for a lot of the game. They had some good moments, but as a collective team, they have a lot to work out still. That's, and that's very frustrating, because they looked so much worse at times than San Jose. They really, really did. As a team with way better personnel, they looked worse. And a lot of that, I feel like, has to do with how they're using some of these young guys, which we're getting into. How does Cole Perfetti being moved down, demoted in this game make any sense? Jansen Harkins is the only reason this game had a chance at the end. Youth. Why isn't Jansen Harkins potentially playing in the top six? I would rather see Jansen Harkins on that top line over Blake Wheeler. I would rather see Colbert Fetty and Jansen Harkins somehow play a top line and split some minutes up there maybe and see that in the game. Those guys are fast. Harkins is not the greatest top line player. But he can still provide a lot of energy up there. Cole Perfetti has a ton of energy. He's youthful and speed. And don't give me all, you know, that goal was his fault. The, uh, the whatever goal it was. I believe it was the, um... Oh, the, the, I'm pretty sure it was the Belchris, Belchris goal. I think it was. I mean, no, it was the hurdle. No, it might have been the hurdle goal. Either way, don't, don't give me that. That's not all on his fault. That whole team failed. There was no options for the defense to move that puck, and they got caught, and they got burnt. It's not Cole Perfetti's fault. Cole Perfetti's a rookie. He was playing with Mark Shifley and Kyle Connor. Some of the, it's the best forwards on the Jets, you can argue. So, you're, what, that, that's, that's, it's all on Cole Perfetti there? That he, there was no outlet with two of the best forwards we have? Don't give me that. Cole Perfetti being moved down just shows how stubborn Paul Maurice is. In a game where you're struggling to get anything going from times, and you're, you're just not getting anything new working, throw out the youth and let them improvise. Let some chemistry try to build. Figure out something. He's so bad at improvising on the spot, it never really seems to work. And don't give me, oh, he improvises. One shift doesn't count. Roll it out for five minutes and see what happens. Not all at once, but still. This is not how a a coach should be working in new players. Here's the system, it's going to work. Okay, but no, no, it's going to work. That's what it feels like right now watching these guys. If, if it wasn't that way, there would be better play. It'd be more consistent. This isn't a team still trying to figure out their identity, even though it is. This isn't a team that's horribly coached. It's way more than that. There are all of these elements being thrown into the pot right now, stirred around by Paul Maurice, and it's not working. And that's going to need to change. I think it probably could, hopefully will you'll definitely see more consistent play out of the forwards i feel like and that defensive issue with finding and reading the plays and passes i think will get better i really do that i really believe is system i think it's coaching and i think it's players so they both need to come together and find a way that they understand and can work this out better but they got to work on their team game could really do because individual performances aren't going to always win you a game you can't improvise everything even though improvising is good from time to time when you don't do it 
So you got to find something that get these guys motivated a little bit. Maybe throw Cole Perfetti on that top line. Maybe throw Ehlers on that top line, which he already should be. Maybe you move uh, Paul, Bl- Bl- Paul Stastny up or down the lineup. You find a way to make Blake Wheeler off that power play. You move that power play around. You fix the penalty kill. Logan Stanley, pull him out and put Villy in and see if the defense is worse or better because tonight the defense was pretty bad. So why not try a young, hungry defenseman and see if it works? That's how you get these guys developed and become NHL players. You find guys that aren't playing strong and you plug them in. So I'd like to see some changes going into the next game. I'm not saying strip it all down and restart, but shuffle it around. Maybe plug in a new guy and see how it works. Because this clearly the last two, these last two variations of this Jets team clearly are not a very cohesive unit. And you have to be a cohesive unit in the NHL to win anything and make the playoffs. And if this team has Stanley Cup aspirations, they've got to get a lot more chemistry and really figure out their identity and their new identity. Because I don't see one right now. It, to me, it's just a smorgasbord of different new faces and kind of an old play style from 2018 that doesn't work anymore. Let me know your thoughts as always down in the comment section below. Make sure to check out all my affiliated links and follow me on Twitter and Instagram in the description. And also make sure to subscribe regardless of the team that you root for. Any subscription that you guys drop on the channel is always appreciated. I really, really does help this channel grow. And without that, without you guys subscribing, without you guys commenting and watching the video, and you know, you don't even have to do any of that, but just watch the video. It does, without you guys sharing your thoughts and helping me grow this Jets fan community, uh, I wouldn't be here. So thank you guys so much for that as always. I'm angry, but I'm still going to keep a cool head because in the end of the day, this game had improvements from the last one, but also kind of felt like a downgrade at the same time. Very weird. I don't know how to feel. I'm angry, but God, think something needs to be changed. Shuffle this around because it's early, so don't strip it down just yet, but you might be going down that road if things don't change. Let me know your thoughts as always. Peace, love, and positivity. Have a great day, and go Jets, go.